and as you can see, okay, guys, right the next now, uh, in time, I am uh, doing a uh, previous assembly watching a lecture here, and I'll, and I'll I, I mean, it's live lecture, uh, and this is one of the best uh, universities in the world on uh, this subject, ancient Near Eastern archaeology and anthropology is the Oriental Institute of Chicago uh, in Chicago, Illinois. I've been there uh, two different times, uh, done a lot of the online lectures with these, these guys, and this is a live one on pottery used as a dating method, right? There's two types of dating. I once joked with my friends saying, I'm taking a class in dating techniques, and they said, well, I need to learn how to get dates, right? You know, no, that's not what I mean. Uh, absolute dating, which is like dendrochronology, which is measuring the age of trees by rings and carbon-14 and potassium argon dating. Those are to give you an absolute date, right? And those are accurate up to a certain point. And then after that, they, they kind of go off the rails. Uh, but in younger archaeology, it's doing things like this within the thousands of years are pretty, pretty accurate. Um, and the other one is relative dating, and you can compare potteries. And pottery, he's talking about how pottery, you know, you'll find certain potteries from certain cultures in an area where they shouldn't be, which shows that they traded with those people or certain potteries can be used as uh, different markers for particular regions, particular cultures, at particular time periods. And so that's what we're doing tonight. Um, anyway, it's uh, Wednesday night. And that's what I'm doing. So I'm on here leaving comments in the box. Okay, there's me, uh, Kavanaugh's History. I love the OI. I've been there twice. I'm a huge fan of antiquities. Isn't that because pottery, as a general whole, can be used as specific identifiers for specific dates, times, and uh, that are specific cultures and regions, right? There are markers, there are identifiers. I can already tell at the beginning, this is a uh, black top redware. You find a lot of this in the uh, Sudan region uh, and so on and so forth. And um, you're going to notice in pottery that uh, generally speaking with the, the imagery on pottery, it gets more advanced, right? Some of the earlier potteries in multiple cultures will start out with, it was in the Mediterranean especially, with basic geometric patterns, and then lately, later they'll look like that amphora behind me on the wall. That picture of the black pot with the red vase, that's going to be from about the uh, 6th century BC in the Attica regions of Athens. This is going to focus more on the ancient Near East, but uh, this is probably why I'm still single. Uh, but anyway, I love this. I love connecting with the best professors in the world on this stuff. I do not take my history or my antiquities and archaeology lightly, ladies and gentlemen. All right, God bless. Have a great evening. Oh, let's watch a little bit of it, actually. This is most of the previous assemblages, pots, and its burial, but introduces a couple of new ones as well. And then those are also... Uh, Back up a little bit. Closer, you could tell that, you know, you could chart a uh, distribution through time based on these assemblages. Because, so, well, maybe it's simplest, actually, if I just show you uh, what I'm talking about through this Assyriation chart. So each one of these rows shows you an assemblage from one of these tombs. And as you can see, the next tomb in time uses most of the ideally a site that has um, many dozen possibly uh, a settlement layers in it that stretch from, let's say, the Capolithic period all the way up to the medieval period. If you excavate a step trench down the side of it, you will collect a ceramic assemblage from each one of those layers and you'll be able to establish very clearly the ceramic sequence that belongs to each one of those layers. And then once you have that, then you can do some really exciting things. And that's what seriation is. Think of seriation as a derivative of the word of series. You have a particular culture, and it's basically uh, setting their series of pottery in a chronology of that particular culture. As I was mentioning earlier, a seriation of uh, Corinthian pottery would be, it's all from a Corinthian area in the... Uh, uh, Peloponnese uh, in modern day Greece, but then it's this period of Corinthian pottery, then this period. In that case, it's Attic pottery. I'm referring to the Mediterranean, but in this case, he's using the Near Eastern. Uh, a seriation of uh, red, uh, blacktop redware, uh, a seriation of these potteries from that. So basically, it's taking one culture that's kind of one culture that has maybe several different sites in it and having a general uh, feel for what the pottery looked like in this particular time. And then the same culture and the same cities having a different series of po uh, pottery. So, seriation, think of series, right? A chronology of these. So, anyway. For example, 
This yeah. is the surface of an archaeological site. These are uh, shares. I, I call them shards. Friend and shares. colleague Jason Ur, a professor who directed a survey, still directs a survey in Kurdistan in uh, northern Iraq. And uh, he invited me along to join the project for a couple of summers, which I was thrilled to do. I had never done survey before at the time. And I was just. Uh, All right, just kind of interesting stuff. Huh? That, uh, oh, studying the night. Uh, Archaeology is a huge hobby of mine, especially. Uh, but Biblical also ancient Near Eastern archaeology, ceramic shirts, archaeology of the Mediterranean. The of these archaeological sites. So all of these objects that you can see here in this photograph on the surface of this particular mountain called Tel Bakrta, all of these are... Oh, a tell, when you hear them say tell, a tell is a city, a city a right? These ancient cities so would build on top of each other and create these mounds that they call tell. Simply lying on the surface of this site alone. Oops. So what an... I'm sorry, I forgot he was talking while I was trying to explain. Uh, tell you heard him mention this was excavated meaning to dug out of the earth at this tell what a tell is is in the ancient near east especially in uh, that particular uh, niche of archaeology you have what's called tells because you look at the cities of the bible uh, that are mentioned in the bible tell dan uh, uh tell dan tell hazor tell you know dan or hazor uh and then you'll hear archaeologists call them tell a tell is a mound because usually there were cities during this time period and new cities were built on top of each other, right? So depending on which layer you excavated through, would see which time period, the, the, which city. Like, so this city was built and maybe destroyed, and then another city was built. And all of that stuff would actually build up into a mound-type structure. And that's what we call tells in archaeology. They said that when Heinrich Schliemann, the famous archaeologist that was seeking to find the city of Troia, or Troy, mentioned in Homer's Iliad, was so excited about digging for Troy. Well, he did excavate it. He did find it. But he destroyed several layers of other stuff on top of it before he got to it, right? Because we hadn't really refined archaeology to a um, to an art form where we had like GPR, ground penetrating radar, which is a system we use now, which allows you to to scan the area and find you know structures and features and cities and uh, without ever having to stick a shovel in the dirt, right? Uh, so you don't have to destroy anything. It's very non-destructive. So anyway, I'm rambling, but this is something I do as a hobby with Bible and Near Eastern archaeology. Uh, and so uh, uh, ceramic typology is very crucial to dates and cultures and uh, archaeologists. A lot of this I kind of already know, but still interesting to hear from the horse's mouth. Remember, these are some of the best scholars in the world. Mr. Cavanaugh does nothing halfway and nothing lightly. All right. People always say, where do you learn all this stuff? I go to find the best sources. I mean, it was their institution that taught me how to write and read in some of the Assyrian Akkadian. Have a good one.